Welcome, welcome. This is the Simply King Podcast. It's your boy Rodney Perry King himself. And you just tuned into the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for Humans, Simply Being Humans. And today is yet again a special one. Um, it is actually Tuesday. The episode usually comes out on Mondays. Um, I've been, you know, challenging myself to basically come up with, you know, concepts like concepts either the day of the day before the morning of the morning, uh, the day before and challenging how, how, how good am I on my feet? You know, I've been doing this for about eight years now. So it's like, you got to stay sharp. You got to stay ready. Can you put together a succinct and decent show with enough time, with enough duration by yourself to be able to do this? Cause the goal very soon, um, letting y'all into my head a little bit is definitely to get some help. Definitely to find a producer. Um, but you know, I got something special at, at the 250th episode. Um, but welcome, 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 welcome all to all new listeners, old listeners. Make sure that you subscribe on everywhere that you can subscribe. It is now midnight. I had to, I, I had the feeling because it was a solar eclipse on uh, April the 8th, which is so funny. Um, and the energy wise, I was like, yeah, I don't think I should do nothing like this. I don't think I should put anything out. I don't think I should post like that. I don't, I think I need to like start my day, need to meditate. I need to pray. I need to just keep myself, you know, just set some intentions, stay open and, um, and, and handle what I handle, whatever I can handle. And, you know, in that day. And I knew that I was going to more than likely do some type of, you know, late night type of recording. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it is what it is. It is what it is. So the thing that came to mind first was the idea of adults can't complain. Concept that I've like made content around before, but only have put out, you know, sprinkled in, the, you know, a little bit of what my beliefs around the idea of complaining is now. The old adage of, you know, don't complain, don't, you know, don't grown ass men don't complain. They just fix things, so on and so on and so forth. I have a pretty maybe, you know, new take to that, because I think that, you know, when you're a millennial, we understand the idea of adulting is basically our kind of backdoor way of complaining about life. And I'm for it. I'm a true millennial and I believe in it. So today we are certainly talking about complaints. And what I would like to introduce to you all is a way to handle your complaints in a different way because adults don't complain. We have grievances. Let's get into it. This is Simply King. So for today, I want to quote, um, I want to quote from Inc.com written by Jeff Hayden. The article is titled, Want to Feel Less Stressed and More Focused? Why Science, Why Scientist, uh, Why Science Says Emotionally Intelligent People Follow This Rule. And that rule being to never complain. Um, when something bad happens, venting can actually make you feel worse for days. And I and I, I, I specifically, you know, cut out this particular quote from this particular article. I make sure to put it in the bottom of this uh, episode. And it says, science says that person, the one who never complains, is definitely on to something. According to research published in 2015 in European Journal of Work and Organizational Psychology, complaining actually makes you feel worse for days. Discussing events immediately during or after they occur forces the brain to relive or rehearse the negative emotional response. The researcher write, this creates a stronger association and memory, exaggerating the influence of the emotional episode. Or in simpler terms, complaining about a negative event actually cements the incident in your mind. Instead of helping you to move on, complaining causes the negative feelings to bleed over into other areas of your life. 
The researchers found that people who complained were in a worse mood, felt less satisfaction and pride in the work they were doing and were significantly more likely to feel less happy and experience poor self-esteem the next day as well. Now, I hypothesize something. Personally, I believe that we got to get certain things off our chest. And that's okay, because I think it's for us to get it off our chest. Um, you can't really let let this thing fester, because I think just because you're not speaking it out loud doesn't mean you're not complaining in your head. I think that that's the thing. And I think speaking it out loud is what makes it even more into a real experience. It's like you're, you're, you're giving it even more life. And I understand that context, but you can't dwell on it. And I think you have to almost have a premeditated attitude towards an idea of complaints in my mind i hypothesize that because we have evolved to a place to where no complaints can hinder our life experience or warp our sense of reality i say i say make your complaints purposeful and constructive and this is where i introduce the idea of adult grievances which is a real or imagined wrong or other cause of for complaint or protest, especially unfair treatment about adulting. That's my little add on to it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, you know, I'm putting two words together, making it afraid. I believe that there's a distinctive difference just solely right in the semantics of those two words, complaints and grievances. Let me explain. A complaint is a statement that a situation is unsatisfactory or unacceptable. There's a sub definition as well as a reason for dissatisfaction or the expression of dissatisfaction. While grievance, like I said, is. Is which is a real or imagined wrong or other cause for complaint or protest, especially unfair treatment. Now, that imagined part obviously has way, way, way too much range on it, but it is what it is. I do believe that. I feel like the key difference in the application of these words is that we can accept complaints. We genuinely, I think that that's what makes you say them out loud and feel that unacceptable thing, but you're trying your best to not take it in, to not be present within that, within that situation. You just want to complain about it. Complain about how 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 unple how unpleasant you're feeling in that moment, and I think that we can approach that differently. Personally, this is my other option that I hope that you all can understand is that I believe that adult grievances they are yes real and imagined wrongs, but I think you need to speak to them and act on them within that moment, and then let it go and release it. You can't allow it to dwell. You have to understand and already you already have a premeditated way of dealing with moments like this. Just like you can deal with moments where you don't complain at all and that is how you feel better about it. That is how you progress and move through things is that you have a certain perspective that you lead with. That's fine. That's cool. But I say there's some things that are genuinely unfair and you can speak to them. I'm giving you permission. I'm giving you permission personally. And, I, and, I, and I'll start this new trend of airing out our adult grievances, saying it, having understanding that it is what it is. That is how you feel. It may be something, but you won't allow it to fester in your soul, in your spirit. You're letting it out. You're letting it go because you're past it. You don't feel no ways because it is what it is. It's not something that you can change. It's beyond you is what I'm saying. I have three. I have three that I can give you all um, the three that I have. Um, the three that I have for you all is actually here we go. There we go. Um, the three that I have for you all, and the most important part about this, like I said, it's about being expressive, accountable. I don't even think I said this yet. It's about being expressive, accountable and releasing that thing. Cause sometimes our complaints are really with ourselves. We're really disappointed with ourselves. We're really coming down hard on ourselves and we want to scapegoat it to be this universal thing, just like with the solar eclipse, just like, you know, Mercury getting micro braids, you know, 
as as she does on on a regular. You know, you can't blame it on the moon. You can't blame it on the stars. Why? certain decisions and things that you've made, you have to really settle into those feelings. You might feel some sense of remorse for your decisions. You might have to feel some sense of regret or disappointment to yourself for the actions that you've been committing, for the behavior that you've been, you know, creating into your world. The reality that you are setting is big, big, big based in your power. It's not solely just on just the world kind of, you know, doing things to you and you catching it. You have influence. You have way more power than that. And I think I want you to understand that and be able to fine tune when those moments happen. Some things might be small enough that they really aren't even grievances. But the things that are big enough to you, that do feel like they impact you, that do feel like they have some type of complex, they really dig at your spirit in some way, shape or form. This is what you do. This is mine. I'll give you my three and hopefully you'll share yours. Number one, as a man, you got to have that bread together. You must. It ain't no way around it. This sounds like a simple one. We're in just a simple, you know, idea of, you know, of, you know, sociology, you know, in terms of understanding society as a whole, in terms of the system of patriarchy and various things like that. I get it, but it, irks my nerves doesn't mean I want to be broke doesn't mean that I want to not have to have things I think that it's just what it all means it's the judgment of where you are and how relative that is to whomever is doing the judging you might be feeling like you're doing well you might be doing better than you ever have and that still might not feel like enough for you until somebody judges it so is it really, are you really comfortable with that amount of money that you make? Because if you were, then no, no, nobody saying that you, you broke or you could make more, you could do more would affect you. Hmm. I think it's relative, though. If you make $80,000 and you living in my hometown of Jackson, Tennessee, yeah, you might be a king. And, can, you know, let's say if you were, we were around this, you know, this age right now, we were 30, making 80K living in Jackson, Tennessee. You're good. You can get a you could more than likely save up to get a crib, potentially get a have a nice two bedroom apartment while you saving up to get the crib. If you're getting promotions in the in between, let's say that's where you're going to spend the rest of your life. Let's just play it all the way out. Nine times out of 10, let's say you get a, just a bump to maybe maybe a 15, 15,000 to 20,000 dollar raise within the span of 30 to let's say 55. So in 25 years, that's how much more money you get. You retire making six figures. You don't had a retirement plan. You were able to save a bunch. You was able to make some good investments. You was able to buy that house, pay on that house. You got you a little lady, maybe one and a half children. You're doing good for yourself. You're good, right? That's not the same case if you just drop you into another metropolitan. The 80K ain't going to be getting it. The women making the 80K, the other men making the 80K, everybody making the 80K just like you. So many people are. Enough people are. Put it like that. Because, yeah, you know, everybody isn't so blessed to get to that amount of money, obviously. But what does that mean? And I think that a lot of people got to just go ahead and let that shit off. Let that shit off your chest. I'm releasing it. I'm not going to allow for that to be the thing that feels me with some type of complex. It is what it is. I, I got to make money. I can't be mad or upset about it. I can't feel sorry for myself about it. I can't complain. But I can have an adult grievance. The next one, number two, is, and this is one that I think everybody will feel. Um, well, <laughs> some people may feel part of it because it's specifically for you and others can feel the other part of it. It's tax time, right? And I believe that we shouldn't have to pay taxes if you're black. Got my Dr. Umar hat on right now, I guess. But ultimately, we none of us, everyone, should not have to file taxes. Because to me, it feels like the weirdest pocket watch situation in the world 
And the fact that we, when you come into understanding of what taxes is, them using that money for what, who knows what. And I get it. We can look up budgets and assume that this is our taxpaying dollars. We can go and look up local budgets and assume that that's our taxpaying dollars. I understand that. But we don't know what the fuck you're using this money for. And I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like the idea that we got to file taxes. You're already taking the money out of people's checks. You already are taking the money from each per purchase. To me, you got enough. And you in debt. In trillions of dollars of debt. There's not even a trillionaire walking around this motherfucker, to our knowledge. So I don't like that. I don't like that because it's like y'all owe niggas money and y'all still taking money from us. I don't think we should pay black people. Excuse me. I don't think black people should pay. I think we've done. I think we've done enough. Personally, we shouldn't have to do no more than that personally. But that's my you know, that's my opinion. Um, Three. But but I, but but that's my adult grievance on that. And I release it. I let it go. <laughs> The last one, and this might be controversial to some because I know people are obviously landlords and various things like that, but also, should you be? Do you have to be? Controversial. <sighs> rent should have limits. If we gonna have to, if we gotta pay rent, the shit should have limits. Only houses should fluctuate up and down in prices because you're paying on them to own the average person is paying after a year paying for motherfucking rent in most apartments these days, you probably have paid for the space that you've been occupying. So it's like, you're still renting me this regardless if, cause in my mind, if you have renewed your lease, let's say you renewed your lease for a place for a number, a number, a grand number of years. A grand number of years. They literally, you probably have, you we can probably quantify the square footage ownership of this space. Because you can do that when you're pricing out how much these things cost, right? Why not cut the shit off? Cut it off. I don't like it. We shouldn't have to pay every month. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. And the fact that it goes up year to year by those large percentages doesn't make sense. I'm using ain't nothing different. Ain't nothing changed. If you ain't in, if you ain't putting a new dough knob in this bitch, I should be, how am I paying more for the same product? And I'm the one still using it. I'm the reason that I'm, huh? Make it make sense. But that is my adult grievances. Now, this next segment, I thought to, I'm going to jump on TikTok and see if anybody else wants to air out their adult grievances. I may include some of those clips in this episode. I don't know. We're going to see if who, we're going to see how people act because you really never know. But I'm going to do that. But in the meantime, because I know this is, as you know, this is a kind of a shorter poppy in type of episode. But it is what it is. I do have a send it on. You know, I never really did a mini pod. Maybe this is what this will be. Because shout out to G-Dep being released from jail. Because um, I used special delivery as I guess kind of my like special to episodes that, you know, maybe came out the same time as another episode in that same week or just our unplanned episodes that I got to talk about the current timely subject matter or whatever, whatever, just jumping in on a story. So I appreciate that. But today, send it on is I want you to tell me what your adult grievances are. I have included a link to Braid where you can attach your adult grievance. You can respond with text or video. I more than likely will share it on social media. 
I appreciate you in advance for doing that for your boy. You feel me? Um, but understand, you are a grown ass person who certainly has seen the world, been in the world as long as you've been. I don't think that you're crazy for thinking that certain things are unfair. I don't think that you're crazy for believing that the world could be better. I don't think you're crazy for pointing out the things in the world that you feel like are not right and you would love to change them if you had the power to. That is all this is about. That's why I think that the idea of not complaining is very specific, but it's also interestingly psychological, too. I understand why psychologists have made this particular observation, but I also push back on the idea that we do need to allow ourselves to release, to make it real so that we can see it, handle it and let it go. So I hope that the idea of having adult grievances, because adults don't complain. We have grievances. And that's the episode. I appreciate y'all for, you know, for rocking with me. If you don't know, you should know. You can follow me everywhere at Kings underscore memoirs. Follow the podcast at Simply King Pod. And make sure, make sure, make sure you are sharing this thing. You are make, making sure that you leave comments on YouTube and various different spaces and places. I appreciate y'all in advance. Talk to y'all next time. This has been the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for Humans. Simply being humans. I've been Rodney Perry. This has been the Adults Don't Complain episode. And this is Simply King. Peace.